At this point, February is gonna have to be named that month. Think about it, it's blackity black, and it's all about romance. That's me in a nutshell. Oh my God. There's no romance, what's the point? <laughs> Just kidding, maybe. Darling, you send me. Yo, it's Anne, welcome back to my channel. We reading books today. It's February, Black History Month, also the month of romance, so it's Black Romance Month. Enough said. The whole idea is to read three black romances through the month of February. Romance is already my genre. I read it all the time. I eat it up, eat it up, eat it up. As of today, it is February 2nd and I'm leaving on a trip to St. Lucia in five days. So I'll bring you guys along with me and that'll be really fun. First, let's finally get into the books that I'm reading. It's not that much, it's just three, but you know, February is a shorter month, so. And I'm not like a, I'm not like a booktuber. I just be reading. Full disclaimer, I did start reading one of them, which is Honey and Spice. I'm 25% in already. Okay, so we have our main character, Kiki Banjo, and she's a college student. She has a podcast. Um, we love girls who have podcasts. So she has a podcast where she like gives dating advice. On her podcast, she publicly denounces an F-boy, an alleged F-boy. Uh, his name is Malachi. He's already got girls fighting in the streets for him. Um, so she calls him out on her podcast and tells women to beware of him. But then she quickly ends up kissing him that same night. So people are like, wait a minute, hypocrisy. Wait a minute, liar. So um, then I think they start this fake dating relationship to uh, salvage both their reputations. So I'm excited. I'm excited. <laughs> I am about 12 hours away from taking my flight. We love a 6 a.m. departure. 6 a.m. Thankfully, before I depart, I have finished Honey and Spice. It upsets me when I don't like a romance book and then upsets me 10 times further when it's a black romance book. We were 40% into the book and the fake dating hadn't started yet. I'm sorry for a romance book. I feel like that's unacceptable. The like tagline of the book is the entire fake dating idea. Like sis, it cannot be happening for the first time halfway through the book. Like halfway through the book, we should be into the fun and games. Like where's the fake dating? I shouldn't be waiting. That rhymed. <laughs> yeah, they're like 40% in and they haven't even gone to a social outing as a fake couple. Like what? What? No, no, no. I feel like the idea of fake dating is to keep up appearances. So appear places. There are some things I look forward to the most when it comes to fake dating. One of them is them going on outings together where they have to fake date. Like that's kind of the allure, the appeal of the entire thing. And it just felt like these people were just dating and then for some reason put this fake dating title on it. And I know the book tries to say that later, but it just, it didn't work for me. I definitely felt like there was a pacing issue with Honey and Spice. The beginning was really slow. And once we got to the fake dating, I felt that everything was happening so quickly. Kiki and Malachi are um, love interests to each other. And the way they were quickly disclosing things to each other, it didn't come off organic. It was just really weird. Like they were just dumping information on each other. And I was like, why? And probably because I'm a slow burn girly at heart, but like it's your first date and you're already talking about your sick mom, couldn't be me. It couldn't be me. If we're being honest, fake dating is a very silly trope. And I find that that's where the comedy can happen with fake dating. I think there should be a lot of comedic events and there was like nothing funny happening with the fake dating. Like no funny scenarios, no like awkward, like that's kind of what I expect and what I look for in a fake dating story. I think Malachi is probably my favorite character in this book. Kiki's all right. I just felt like it was weird that we're inside her head, but I felt like I didn't really know her still. For most of this book, I didn't really know who Kiki was as a character and I didn't really feel connected to her. Just all in all, I think this book was just not my style, not my vibe. I think I tend to prefer my fake dating to, to be pretty lighthearted and on the rom-com side rather than a more serious type of book because I think fake dating in itself is already a silly concept. So 
if you take it too seriously, then I kind of get lost and I'm not, I'm not having fun. So that's what I'd say about Honey and Spice. The second book I'll be reading is Highly Suspicious and Unfairly Cute by Talia Hibbert. I'm uh, quite a fan of Miss Talia Hibbert. I've read her entire Brown Sisters um, series and really enjoyed them. So I'm excited to see how her YA debut goes off. Why romance is my cup of tea. So to see Miss Talia Hibbert dip her toes in there, I'm excited. I'm excited. Yo, it's Anne. I'm currently in St. Lucia. I apologize for the setup. Not that it's like that far off from what I do back home. But anyways, um, I finally finished Highly Suspicious, Unfairly Cute. And this book was great. I had a really fun time reading it. Like, I actually found myself laughing at points. So I think that's really good for a book. Um, Talia Hibbert's always really good with the comedy when it comes to her rom-coms. I think... I think a lot of authors forget that in rom-coms. They're usually concentrating on the rom part more than the com. And Talia Hibbert does a really good job at balancing both. So um, basically, if you don't know the premise, it's about um, this girl. Her name is Celine, and she used to be best friends with Bradley. Um, but now they hate each other for some unknown reason, which you find out obviously in the book. And they are forced to work together and to camp out in the woods because there's some type of scholarship program um, where you get your like tuition paid. I don't know if in full, but like a lot of the tuition. So basically, the, um, there are three winners for the scholarship and these two are rivaling each other. So it was really fun. And also, Celine's like a big conspiracy theorist and um, Bradley has OCD and is also a bisexual guy so that's like Talia Hibbert's really good at um flawlessly inserting representation so I like that about her um I think this book like touches on a bunch of different issues like absent absentee parents um mental health obviously I felt that that was really well done um overall again I had a lot of fun I really thought they were so cute the only 
things that I would have liked from the book would be that I wish they explored more of what their friendship looked like before they started beefing. Like, I liked, they had this um, inside joke, or like, I wouldn't call it a joke, but inside, like, thing where she would punch him on both arms when she was mad at him. And, like, she knew to do that because he would, it would bother him if she didn't do it on both arms and I felt like that was really sweet and that was like a cute like call back to their friendship beforehand and even though she doesn't like him she can still remember things about their friendship so I felt like there could have been more of that I didn't 100% feel like they grew up together which I didn't get that vibe necessarily so I would have wanted to have more of that I also think their turnaround from enemies to friends was quite quick and quite simple um, which almost like makes me question the purpose of it in the first place. Like I felt like they could have been bickering a little bit longer before they like called it a truce, you know. And I found that their their transition from enemies to friends was off page a lot, which I would have preferred to see more instead of hearing about it. Those are the only couple things that I would say about the book. But overall, it was like really fun really quick, easy read. Then uh, last book I'll be reading is Seven Days in June by Tia Williams. This book I've heard so much about. I've heard so many good things. People love it. It was giving, I'm sorry, every song's about you. This is probably the least like, what is it, lighthearted romance that I'll be reading out of the three that I've just shown. Um, but I'm excited to try something a little bit different because I usually stay on the lighter side, but I think I'll enjoy this. Yo, it's Anne. I'm back home. Y'all like the new hair? It's giving boho twist. Ooh, 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 ooh. Anyways, I'm ready to wrap up this video and talk about the books that I read this month in February. I'm really glad that I was able to read all of them because I was able to knock out a lot of books on my TBR all at once, so making space for other other romance books. Let's be real, I'm not gonna be reading other types. I will talk about all three, give you a summary, but let's get a deep dive into Seven Days in June. Um, I realized that in my clip, I didn't even explain what the book is about. So this book is about two black authors who share the same literary agent. And way back when they had a romance, they had a ting when they were teenagers, and then 15 years pass and they meet again they find out that they have been each other's muse the entire time. So she's been writing about him and he's been writing about her throughout their entire literary career. And it's it touches on a lot of different topics like trauma, mental illness, addiction, just all the stuff. And I will say, Seven Days in June had a lot going up against it. Second chance romance, not my favorite trope. Single parent? Also not my favorite trope. So it was 0 for 2 coming in and it's been on my TBR for quite a long time, but I've avoided it because I thought, mm, I'm just not a fan of those tropes. Am I gonna like this? But I'm here to say that Seven Days in June completed the mission successfully. Ladies and gentlemen, we got it. We found it. This was so good. So good! <laughs> I'm so happy. I'm so happy that I won this book. So happy that I read it. I'm a big proponent of tropes. I like them and I get why we obsess over them. But this is a prime example of, you know, you should always, always try things that you're not necessarily sure that you'll be a fan of because you never know. And it's, you know, what's hilarious. Honey and Spice was like, if you described it to me, was a sure thing. Should have been like a 100% got me, but no, a flop. And this one was a bop. Like the characters, ugh, the depth, just, I just love the dialogue. I found none of it cringy. It was very natural, very good. The chemistry between the two characters, oh! I was rooting for them, their love story. Their, and you know what was really amazing? Their love story at the beginning and then their love story now, same magic, the same magic. And I think that's usually what I have a problem with in Second Chance Romance. I often find that the love story that happened either before when they were first together or when they get back together isn't as good. Usually they become toxic by the end, so I'm not even rooting for them. Or the way that they were together just seems irrelevant. Like, I'm like, why wouldn't you just have these characters meet 
for the first time in real life. I'm not really seeing why it needs to be second chance. But this was, this eight, like their first love story when they were first together was beautiful and tragic. And then the second time was beautiful and tragic in a different way. Ah, I just, this book, this book was, this was good. The only criticism I'll give the book, womp womp, is I found the third act to be a little bit lackluster. I felt like the third act conflict was not as emotional as I wanted it to be. Um, it could have been, I just felt like a lot of things weren't addressed and it wrapped up really quickly in that one chapter rather than letting us sit in the emotions of what happened in the third act. But this was beautiful. I cannot recommend it enough. Like the girlies are not lying. They're not lying. Seven days in June, she did it. I'd say overall, this month was a good reading month. I found two books that I really enjoyed. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Let's pretend that didn't happen. Usually I don't buy physical copies of books I haven't read yet. I either borrow them for the library first or a friend has to recommend it to me. I don't usually blindly go in and buy books that people have been talking about. I am gonna keep the two and this one I might, you know, give away to somebody. I really liked doing this uh, vlog because it pushed me to read more books than I would at a time. I'm an avid rereader. I usually read the stuff that's on my bookshelf and that's about it. On average, I'd say I'd only read like 15 to 20 new books a year. I'm very much a mood reader. So to <laughs> read my one third of my quota in the first like first month of the year or the second month of the year is pretty, pretty cool. Seven days in June, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Highly suspicious, unfairly cute, adorable, adorable. Um, honey and spice, not for me, not for me. For other people, just not for me. The theme of this video was black romance. So I guess I, I feel like I have to finish on that. I think black romance is in its peak era, especially black YA romance, uh, don't get me started. A theme that I find with black romances and what I like about them is that I find that they're more grounded than other romance books. Um, more mainstream ones. Um, I find like what they're what the characters are doing relatable. It just doesn't feel like what is going on. Like sometimes in these romance books, I'm like, what? Why are we doing this? And wh what are we doing? And why are we doing it? These books, beautiful. I understood most of the characters' motivations, and I was along for the ride. Plus, I got two two new faves, so I'm really excited about that. Anyways, I hope you liked this video. I hope you enjoyed all the parts, the vlog, everything. Um, this is my first vlog video. We'll see if <laughs> that continues. You know if you subscribe to this channel, you get hotter? I'm not making that up. It's like scientifically proven that you become a hotter person once you subscribe. I don't make the rules. I'm just stating scientific fact. We're on the road to 1K subscribers. So you want to be part of this journey. Do not let that go. We are one fifth of the way. <laughs> Do it, cause it's free 99 and you become hotter. I'm like unstoppable deal. <laughs> Anyways, I'll catch you guys in the next video. Bye. Darling, you